Hello Internet! In this video, we're going to be taking another look at worldofzero.com and some of the tooling that I'm using to kind of make it all work. Um, specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at serializing and deserializing YAML. Um, mostly deserializing, that's all we're going to be doing in this. Um, but what, what ends up happening with worldofzero.com is it parses all of the videos that are part of my channel on YouTube, so where you're <laughs> probably watching this. Uh, and then it grabs all of those and serializes them into markdown files. And then those are created and generated into a website, which is then hosted for me. Um, so you can actually see like markdown embedded content that goes a little bit more in depth uh, and kind of more nicely formats the descriptions of videos and also includes other content and stuff as well. Um, part of the thing that I want to do is tag things. Um, so if you're not familiar with YouTube tagging, Tags provide a way for you to kind of say, this is a video about Unity or about uh, cloud computers or whatever else you want to sort of uh, label your, your, your video as. Uh, in this case, though, uh, with YouTube, you tend to duplicate tags and it can get kind of confusing because you'll, you'll have two things that are talking about, say, Kubernetes or Unity 3D, but they'll use multiple iterations of those. Uh, to kind of symbolize the same thing. And so what I wanted to do is have something that, that strips all of that out. And so that's sort of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Uh, on the left or on the right hand side, sorry, is sort of tags.yaml. This is my really basic YAML file that describes a set of tags that have a name and a series of synonyms. So this is going to look through all of my YouTube videos and find any video that matches the name or any of the synonyms and assign that tag to it. Anything that doesn't match this is automatically excluded. So these are the only tags that will be used. Um, this sort of helps keep them limited and also kind of filters you similar things, similar topics into a more general, general thing so it's easier to find. Um, that's sort of how this is intended to work, uh, but we can't use this yet. We don't have any way to actually get this file into our thing. So what we're going to be using is a project called yaml.net, and this allows us to parse YAML. This parses YAML in uh, version 1.1 of YAML, the YAML spec, uh, which is unfortunate, I guess. Uh, YAML is a, is a weird language, I guess, and it, it, it can be a little bit confusing, especially version 1.1. Um, that's because Booleans, for example, um, are true and false, but also yes and no, and Y and N, um, and a few others too. The spec is very loud. All of that was removed in YAML uh, 1.2, but uh, YAML.net does not support 1.2, at least as far as I could tell. It's just one point, the 1.1 spec, uh, which means that if we have some string that is no, for example, it might parse that as the Boolean no, or false. <laughs> Weird things can happen, so, so you, you have to be kind of aware of that with YAML. Um, just because everything is text and intended to be human readable, uh, our language is just not programming languages. It's not as concrete and descriptive as typical programming languages expect, and so there's some, some weird things that can arise there. This is hopefully a, a more in-depth description than is probably needed. Um, but just to kind of walk through what ends up happening, I have short-circuited the entire downloading the videos thing because we're just focusing on the file right now. Doing all of that will happen in a later video. Um, so this is sort of what happens right now. We call this tag constructor and say parse the tag set from file, which is saying given this file, figure out all of the, all of the tag sets that we have. Um, and this is just to set this represented as C-sharp classes. And so I've constructed a really basic one here. Effectively, this code is the same thing as what you see on the right hand side, just without the synonyms, because they are not needed in this. Uh, and then we're just iterating over those and logging them out. And that is pretty much it. Then we just short circuit everything and return instead of executing all that other stuff. Uh, so what we actually need is I want to be able to comment this code out um, to not have it run. Uh, just so you're aware of what ends up happening right now, that does not look right. Um, if we run this, this is going to go and parse everything. You see we get foo and then bar. Uh, those are the values there. Uh, we can change this and do like bar three, whatever we want. And we should get that updated here. Uh, but what we need to do is pull this out. So I want to be able to delete this and still have it work. 
This is our tag constructor. This is what's going to actually do all of that logic. Uh, and we really need to implement this parse tag set function. Um, so in order to do this, what this is going to do is given a string of the contents of a file, it's going to need to parse that YAML into this tag set and tag object. Uh, and so in order to do this, you need a, deser a deserializer builder, which is going to build a deserializer for you. Uh, and this is a yaml.net thing. So we're going to do var deserializer equals a new deserializer builder, I think. Um, if I spell this wrong, we're not, there we go. Uh, so we need to import the using statement for this and then we just need to build it. Uh, so this isn't going to work, but I'm going to continue with it anyway. Uh, we'll talk about why it doesn't work in just a sec, but the error is useful. Uh, and it will, if you run into this, uh, then it will help you debug it, hopefully. Um, so this is our deserializer, and all we need to do now is deserialize it. So deserializer.deserialize. And so you can give it two types. You can either give it this untyped version, or you can give it the typed version. Um, so if you do the generic set and give it the thing you're expecting to be able to deserialize, it's going to attempt to return whatever object you pass in. Um, so as long as this tag set, which has a tags thing, matches the top level tags of my YAML file, it should parse that and assign the values from this YAML list into the parsed set over here. That's, that's what we're hoping to accomplish. Uh, and so if we just put, do this and pass in the contents, and that is the contents of our file, and then just return this, that should get us the parsed set of values. Uh, this doesn't work though. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go back here and delete this temporary thing. Uh, so we don't, we don't need those temporary things. Um, but if we get rid of that and run this, we're going to end up seeing an error. And so the error looks like this, uh, which is gross and whatever, but it's going to end up saying, uh, exception during deserialization, property tags not found on type. Um, world of zero dot tag set. So it's saying tag set does not contain a property named tags, but it does. Uh, it has tags, capital T, and our tags.yaml has tags, lowercase t. Um, so what's ended, ending up happening is it is trying to automatically assign the names from your YAML to your class, but it's not doing anything smart. We haven't told it to do anything intelligent about this. Um, and so it, it doesn't map them because they're, they're named differently. Uh, we could probably rename this to a capital T tags in our YAML file, but typically uh, these are configuration files that are coming from somewhere else. Uh, and so you don't usually want to do that. Uh, what you would want to do is specify the naming convention that you're expecting. Uh, and so we can do that by importing this uh, serialization dot naming conventions uh, namespace. And then in before building our deserializer, we want to actually use it. So we're going to do dot with uh, naming convention, and we're going to do camel cases naming convention and just grab the instance of that. So this is a singleton uh, naming convention specified thing. Uh, that's, that's a great, great way to say that. Um, but what this is going to say is we're expecting camel cases. So if you have multiple words in your YAML file, it is going to try to parse those in camel cases. Um, so it would take, uh, for example, if our YAML file had test content, oh, that's wrong. Um, if our YAML file had, I guess, test content, it would expect to match to test content as the, as the property. Um, but that's, I guess, the best way to, to say this. Um, there's a few of these. I haven't explored super deep into all of them. This is the one that I usually use, so it, it, it works. Um, but if we run this now, we should, hopefully, be parsing our stuff. Um, if I've done this right. Yeah, there we go. So these are all of the tags that I currently have specified. These are the top level names. Um, we should be able to grab all the other information we need from this, um, but that's pretty much getting the YAML into our code. And now we can actually use that and do certain things we want with it. Um, but I will leave it here. I think that's pretty much everything that we need to cover. Uh, this is probably more in depth than we needed to go, um, but I would just keep in mind the naming convention thing and also the, the YAML spec version. Um, because YAML can be weird and that can, that can catch you if you're, if you're not aware of some of the weirdness. Um, so, so that's, I guess, all of it. Uh, we'll probably be revisiting this both 
to further go on with this project to actually make it assign these tags. Um, there's some code that I have to write on the side to get this actually working, because uh, right now I can't actually get the video tags. Um, so we're going to have to do that first. Uh, and then we're also going to probably be using this in Unity. So uh, YAML.NET is also supported in Unity. There's a Unity package for it. Um, so if you want to use that, I'm going to hopefully be looking into in, in the future, looking into how to take this and you create configuration files for your Unity project. So you can specify things that maybe users can change or maybe you can change to specify dialogue or uh, different properties for your objects. Uh, but that's it for now. So I will leave it here. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. So until then, see you, Internet.